Okay, so in this video we're going to discuss how we can use Hall sensors to identify a magnetic field. Now we're going to talk about the use of these Hall sensor units um, in conjunction with the Microfit and Kitronic all-in-one breakout board. Um, we have two different modules here, two different units which both have hall sensors at the very front of them. So you can see here in the black one that we have a bit of black plastic with three legs coming out of it. That is the hall sensor itself. And you can also see that here on the larger unit. Now the difference between the two units really is that this one has a sensitivity level as well as has um, a digital output while this one only has an analog output. Um, now, for this, um, I suppose, tutorial of how to use these hall sensors, we're only going to be using the analog output anyway. So, just to run through the different pins, we have on the black unit, on the far right hand side, we have our ground, which is our minus. The center, we have our plus, where we can put up the 3.3 volts to 5 volts. And then we have our signal, which is our analog signal pin. On this unit, we have our analog on the far right hand side this time. We have our G for ground, which is our minus pin. And then we have our plus, which is 3.3 volts to 5 volts again. And then we have DO, which is our digital pin, which we're not going to be using. Um, as well as that, we have our adjustable sensitivity levels here on this one. And we also have some LED lights will help us identify if the unit itself sees a magnetic field. Now, the wiring and the code for both of these are going to be the exact same as long as you have the ground going to the right place, the plus going to the right place and the digital or sorry, the analog pin going to the right place. So what we're going to do is we're going to concentrate on this unit here and show you how this is wired up in conjunction with the micro bit as well as a bit of code to run it. So we might as well just move over our other unit here, which already has a few pins connected. We have our battery supply, which I have a nine volts going to the breakout board itself, which can take up to 10.8 volts. It will supply three volts or 3.3 volts to the microfit itself by stepping that voltage down. And then we're going to use our 3.3 volts off of our pin here, as well as our ground. And then we're going to pick an additional pin, which can read analog uh, signals. So we're just going to pick pin zero. We're going to connect this pin zero back to our analog one here. We're going to get our ground, put it up to ground like so. And then we're going to have our 3.3 volts going to our plus like so. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and show you the code. And after that, we're going to come back and we're going to test it with the magnet and show the, I suppose the, the actual, numbers which are coming to the microbit itself on the 5x5 five five matrix to show you how it works with the magnet itself. Okay, so now that we are on our microbit code editor, we can start off with our forever block. We can also go for our basics because we want to show the number on the 5x5 five five matrix that we're getting back from the hall sensor itself uh, from that analog pin. So we want to represent that number over here in our five by five matrix. So we'll go for this show number block. We can go further down then, and we can go for our pins below here, this tab. We want to go for analog because we're getting back an analog signal. We'll drop that in here and we'll change it to the pin that we're using. We've chosen to use pin zero. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to put in a pause. So I'm going to do basics and going for pause and give it one second. And that should be a thousand milliseconds. What that will do is give the unit time, you know, the microfit itself, to decide what the actual reading it's getting and display that in the five by five matrix. Okay, so now that we have uh, figured out our code and uploaded it to the microfit itself, what we can do is turn on the power to the unit itself, and we should start getting readings out from the five by five matrix. Now it might be hard for you to read there on the video, so I'm just going to call it out to you. So we have six, five, five, six, five, six, six, five, four. Okay, so we're getting around 650 
so what we're going to do now is we're just going to move a magnet near to the sensor. Now, depending on what pole of the magnet you use, you might get nothing detected. So if I switch it around here now to this side, lovely. We can see a light turns on. As well as that, the numbers change to two, three, two, 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 three. So you can see there's a big jump in the numbers that we're getting way, way down. And you can see as I move it away, the light turns off. As well as the numbers change again, back up to 662, around 650 again. When I come in close enough, light turns on. And again, we get our low numbers, two, three. Now this works the same with the other module. All you have to do is you have to put your to your analog pin, your ground, your plus, and your numbers should be a small bit different, but changing the sensitivity here should help adjust for that.